Hello class, Mr. Knight here. I'm going to share my insights for Lesson 5. So Lesson 5 is an extension of Lesson 4. In Lesson 4 we first learned about source code control with Git. And we did everything locally on our own machine. We learned the importance of making check-ins or commits with good messages for the sake of having history to which we could refer and possibly, if necessary, recover. But Git is more than just a tool for your local machine. Git is also a distributed version control system or source code management tool. And that's what we're going to talk about with Lesson 5. Git specifically with GitHub. Now what does it mean when I say Git is distributed? Distributed as a source control tool means that the repository can exist in more than one location. There's no necessarily single source of truth, though by convention usually there is one repository that's the master one. But anyway, <coughs> a Git repository is nothing more than a collection of files inside of a directory with a little bit of metadata controlling um, the commits and version control, or all the version control information like pointers and heads and check-ins and all that. That repository can exist anywhere. It can exist on your machine, it can exist on a remote server, it can exist on a team member's machine. There can be multiple places. Typically, what a team does is they'll host a, a common remote repository on a server. And usually that's managed by a service provider like GitHub or GitLabs or Atlassian Bitbucket. And that repository is kind of meant to be the, the master repository or the source of truth. That repository should have the, the main version of the code, the version of the code that is, <clears throat> excuse me, ultimately built into the software product, the thing that goes through the pipeline. And as a team member, what you will do is you will make a clone of that repository from the remote server to your own local machine. And with that, it's called a git clone. You are cloning the entirety of the repository. And it's not just that you're cloning the files, you're cloning all the metadata to that .git folder and all of its contents. You have a perfect, complete clone of everything of that repository. So if you wanted to go and fork your own version of that project, theoretically you could. So you as a team member will check out or you will clone that repository on your machine. Your other team members will clone the same repositories on their machines. And everybody can work independently. Uh, you can make changes to add new feature A. Your teammates can add new features B and C. And the nice thing is, since everybody has their own version of the repository, your changes aren't going to collide while you're working on it. You will add new code, you will commit to your local repo, and you will probably make a couple commits. Now this is important to understand the difference between a commit and a push. When you do a git commit in your own local repo, your repo is the only one that gets it. A commit does not automatically push it to the remote or push it out to the other people on your team. Those commits only exist in your copy of the repository. So how do you get it to the remote repository? And that's what we call a push. A push will take any of your new local commits and sync them to another repository. Oftentimes that's the central remote repository that your team works on. And so after you push, that's when your teammates can then fetch and pull the changes that you've pushed to their own local repositories when they're ready. Anytime that there is a conflict, meaning you did changes and someone else did changes and you change different things in the same spot, you'll, that person will need to do a merge. If the new changes are already up in the um, remote repo, you'll need to merge when you push up. <clears throat> Hopefully when they pull down, um, it'll be clean, but they may, your teammates may also have to merge the new changes into their changes when they pull down as well. 
So keep that in mind. That's just how it goes. You can't avoid the merge problem. You can just hope to mitigate it. <clears throat> Another really cool thing with Git is the idea of branching. So far, when I've been talking about Git, I've kind of been presuming everybody's working in one branch, one master branch, or one develop branch. But you can have multiple branches. And the reason is because you may be working on multiple things at the same time within the same project. It's usually a best practice that whenever you start working on a new feature, you will create a branch off of the main branch and put all of your changes in there. And then when you're ready to commit that whole feature, you will merge your feature branch back into the main branch and then push that out. That's very helpful because if a new bug comes in and you need to fix it, or a more important feature comes along, you can pause what you're doing on the first feature, go back to the master branch and make a new branch off so that you can have two or three or four or however many versions of the code you want locally that aren't interfering with each other, the same way you're not interfering with other teammates' code. Pretty useful. And when you do branching, that also opens up things like pull requests and code reviews. Because if you have a feature branch off of master, when you go to merge, before you do the merging, you can stop and say, hey, I would like to merge. Can somebody do a code review here? And you can diff the different branches to make it very clear what the changes were. Most tools like GitHub, GitLabs, Bitbucket, they all have some sort of pull request feature and some sort of diffing and review feature. Uh, I use it every day when I'm in my development job. <laughs> it's super useful and super helpful. So that's about all I have to say about uh, remote Git, so to speak, distributed Git. Uh, I I'll say it again, source control is one of the most important tools a developer has, especially when working on a team. And Git just makes it so easy. <laughs> it's become ubiquitous. Almost all development teams I've seen in recent years use Git instead of other source control uh, tools. I also want to make it clear that Git as a tool is separate from the service providers. Right. Git is a free open source tool anyone can use, runs on the command line, it's beautiful. GitHub, GitLabs, Atlassian Bitbucket are basically Git as a software service. Uh, you can get free repositories and free hosting at certain tiers at all those service providers, but ultimately those are companies trying to run a business. And so if you want more advanced features or you want private repositories or you need a certain number of users, you're going to have to pay to win. So Git is not GitHub. GitHub uses Git, if that makes sense. So I hope this, this little info session has been helpful. Uh, do well in your Lab 5 exercises where you're going to play around with GitHub and doing things remotely with cloning and pushing and all that kind of stuff. So have fun, y'all. Take care.